Flippin' logs, flippin' logs, grab some bark and flip with Park. Hi everybody, John Park here, fighting Flemmel Schlager and Stewardship Project Director at New Jersey Audubon. Today I was out on a hike and I uh, was about to flip logs when I uh, came across this guy. Porcupine, hanging out in the trees, chilling out. Porcupines are cool. Um, a lot of people are even like pretty amazed we even have these here in New Jersey. They got about 30,000 quills uh, on their body. And those quills are modified hairs. Uh, they're made out of keratin, which is the same stuff as your fingernail. It's pretty, uh, pretty wild. Uh, they're not dangerous unless you get right up on them, right? They don't chase you down. They don't shoot quills at you. Um, but those quills are pretty sharp. And they got little barbs on them. And what happens is, uh, when they do, do uh, have the fence and you come in contact with it, that's when those quills dislodge. Those quills, uh, when they dislodge, they do grow back, which is pretty cool. All right? Get out there in the woods. Enjoy yourself. Stay, uh, stay far apart from each other. And uh, always remember to look up every once in a while. You might see a cool thing. Hi, everybody. John Park again. Walked a little further down the road and saw another porcupine. Okay, so here we have another porcupine. So, uh, porcupines are uh, solitary animals for most of their lives. Uh, with the exception of wintertime, they'll they den up with others and, of course, for courtship. Uh, they don't hibernate. Uh, they live in dens, which are rock crevices or uh, inside hollows of trees. Uh, sometimes you can get them in the abandoned buildings out here. Um, they, uh, they give birth in uh, spring, early summer, to, uh, to one, uh, one baby. Uh, I think they call it Porky Pets. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the name for a baby, Porcupine. But um, they only weigh about 15 ounces at birth. Uh, they have soft quills when they're first born. It only takes a couple of days for those quills to harden up. Uh, the quills are hollow on all porcupines. Um, they're nearsighted. Uh, but they have a really good sense of hearing and smell. They don't have too many uh, predators. Um, but uh, the fisher is the real problem for these guys. Uh, he's a habitual predator of a porcupine. Fishers have figured out how to flip them over on their backs. And uh, it's where the soft underbelly is. So, uh, so yes, we have our porcupine, our second one of the day. It's looking good. I can see he's a male. And, uh, yeah. Well, remember, always look up. Never know what you're going to see. So I'm walking down the trail, and I look, and I see another porcupine. A three porcupine kind of day. There he is, up in a hemlock. Unbelievable. So uh, what else can I tell you about porcupines? Well, uh, they have a nickname called the quill pig. Um, they, uh, they tend to eat in one spot uh, for a while. I mean, not just the tree, but I'm mean, talking about like maybe uh, the surrounding area around that tree there. Um, so they, they create patches within the forest. Um, what I mean by that is they'll eat the bark and the leaves, and sometimes they'll actually wind up girdling the tree and kill the tree, or sometimes parts of the tree. And in turn, that kind of opens up the, the canopy. See? see? And uh, when you do that, it stimulates the... Um, uh, the seed bank, and you get regeneration. He's kind of like a Flemmelschlager, in that the Flemmelschlager is a, a German term for a forest management practice that uh, is kind of designed to emulate natural disturbance and encourage species diversity, multiple age, age classes uh, through cutting and all. So there you go, little Flemmelschlager and quill pig. Uh, eat those trees and create some forest uh, age class diversity, which helps other species too. Love these guys.